My name is Sam Rowe. Um, I'm the Legal and Policy Associate here at Yoti. Firstly, Yoti's core business principles. Secondly, the way in which Yoti uh, engages with objective oversight. And there are a few different ways which I'll, I'll discuss at the time. And then finally, how Yoti embeds transparency throughout its business practices. Taking then the core business principles that Yoti has. So from its inception, Yoti has had uh, a set number of core business principles. I think initially it was eight, but we've trimmed it down to now seven. And you can find that on the ethical framework part of Yoti's website. The core, Yoti's, uh, the core business principles of Yoti form the foundation of our ethical framework, which I've just discussed. Um, and they allow us to essentially create an ethical steer uh, or a yardstick by which we can ensure that whatever we're doing um, always will adhere to these seven high level principles. You might have come across other tech companies which have used um, sort of core principles to, to guide their business practices. We found that because we have seven core principles, it means that no matter what, uh, what activities we're undertaking, what products we're developing, what products we're trying to sell, because we have this suite of core principles, we're able to um, assess each stage of the product development lifecycle against the principles, thereby ensuring that we're always adhering to our, our core ethos, as it were. I think one of the perhaps most prominent ways that we do that is through what we call our Guardian Council. The Guardian Council is our independent ethics board, which is made up of influential individuals from uh, a, a spectrum of fields such as human rights, data privacy, last mile tech. The Guardians will meet once a quarter at least, um, and they do so to discuss and provide advice to Yoti on ethical and trust issues that we face. The minutes of those meetings are available on our website and, and that's for all of the meetings that they have. So but that's one of the ways in which we try and embed transparency in the company. Um, and of course it enables then interested parties, whether that be businesses, users, um, stakeholders, especially government stakeholders, to see what sort of ethical issues we might be facing as a company and also what sort of advice we receive. And then it should hopefully be obvious how we uh, take that sort of advice on board through what we do in our day-to-day -day practice. Now, the idea with the Guardian Council is that they're almost like a non-executive board. Um, so although their opinions aren't binding on the activities of the Yoti senior management, um, because they're so well-respected and so prominent in their fields, they should be able to provide or, or cause so much reputational damage to Yoti if we decide to go contrary to their views it would be completely um, irrational for Yoti to act in any way other than in accordance with what they think. And so there are a few examples where they've, they've had very strong views about things that we shouldn't do. And consequently, we haven't gone down those routes. And um, if, you, if you're interested, I, I would certainly recommend you going through a few of the minutes of the Guardian Council um, because they are, they're quite feisty. Another way in which we try and embed objective oversight within what the company does is through uh, what I call the Internal Ethics and Trust Committee, which is a body that I set up and I also chair. Now, the idea of the uh, internal body is to complement the work of the Guardian Council. So it's comprised of a cross-section of Yoti employees from you know, most senior to least senior, um, from design through to development, business, business development, etc. cetera. Um, and the idea is to become more of an agile group than Guardian Council, so we can meet we have to meet once a quarter, but we meet in practice much more often than that. And what happens is that either employees or external stakeholders will put forward issues that they think either Yoti is facing right now or might face in the future. And then we have a sort of set process by which we discuss those issues. Um, and then we come to a conclusion. That conclusion is fed through to the relevant design teams or, or development teams, senior management, etc. And it's a way of holding the company accountable for our own decisions um, from an internal process. Now, alongside having these sort of fairly formal boards, we have more of an ad hoc approach um, through the use of things like round tables and opening ourselves up to external critique. The reason we hold, host round tables is in order to obtain feedback on particular subjects, such as age estimation, 
And from our view, it's, it's useful because it enables us to encourage feedback that's been synthesized from a group, uh, from a number of stakeholders, rather than merely obtaining a single stakeholder's view each time. We think that's beneficial because it can lead us to obtain more comprehensive feedback than we might get from, let's say, engaging with one government uh, body or one regulator, and then one civil liberties group, and then one relevant stakeholder from their um, business development side, because each of those bodies will have a, a, an area of interest, which they'll be happy to feed back to us, but they might not always have considered the issue from the perspective of another relevant stakeholder. And by forcing them to come together in, in sort of groups, they can provide feedback, for which for us will be much more comprehensive. Now, in, in addition to these sort of roundtables that we hold, we also undergo numerous external reviews, which will be held in um, a formal matter. So that'll be either because we're wanting to obtain certification in some form, or because we think that there might be an area which is contentious enough that we want to have clearly external and objective uh, a review of our own process. We think that you know being, being able to mark our own homework is one thing, uh, but it isn't necessarily very good when you're trying to inspire trust from those who are external to the company. Uh, and then finally, in terms of this objective oversight, we have uh, committed to a number of external pledges. Um, we, we use the likes of Responsible 100's frameworks um, and also other external pledges in order to complement our own internal business principles um, in order to provide, again, another objective yardstick that we can use when we're evaluating whether what we're doing adheres to our company's ethos, and also when those who are trying to hold us to account so that they have additional yardsticks to hold us to account too. 